Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. The Mac Mini has made some pretty big headlines these days. Everyone's saying it is the best Mac you can buy, or at least some people are, but also there are some people who are saying that this is much better than whatever PCs or Windows can offer. And I saw people even saying that it's better than Windows PC workstation. You know, you see it once, you're like, oh, whatever. You see it a few times, you start to wonder yourself, wait a second. Am I going the wrong way here? Should I switch? Should I go Apple instead of PC? And you know, especially me who's, who's built the Mac Pro killer PC in the back over there. If you remember, if you've been on the channel long enough, you remember we built this one. And I'm thinking, should I go Mac Mini instead? I got to the point of curiosity that I got one of these M1 chip Mac Minis myself, and I'm trying to find out the answer myself. If you're one of those people who are wondering exactly the same things, then hopefully after this video, will be much closer to the truth. But right now, we're much closer to this sponsored segment. Artlist is an affordable way to license all the music you need for your projects. Whether it's personal, commercial, TV, podcasts, YouTube, Facebook, you get the point. You name it, it's covered. No more worrying if your music licensing covers your project. One worldwide license that covers it all. Oh, and that's not all. Artlist also includes tons of sound effects and the music is updated daily, so you never run out of choice. If you're wondering, how did I get all these nice shots of B-roll, well, it's called Artgrid, a site similar to Artlist but for video. Artgrid can provide all the stock footage you need from HD to 8K, profile formats, log or graded, to assure that it can be personalized and fitted to your current project. And Artgrid works the same as Artlist, one worldwide license that covers it all. So it's simple, choose the license that you need and that fits your budget and enjoy the unlimited downloads without any extra cost added. Get two extra months for free when you join Artgrid or Artlist through the links provided. Check out Artlist and Artgrid in the video description below. So here are the three computers we are comparing. This one over here is the MacBook Pro 13 inch from 2019. It is the base model. So it's got a quad core Intel processor. It costs around a grand and a half here in the UK, 1,500 pounds. This Mac mini over here costs 699 pounds with the M1 chip inside. And this behind me over there, this is the Mac Pro Killer PC that we built on this channel and it has a dedicated GPU and a very powerful CPU and it costs around £2,300. So I'm going to compare a lot of different areas, there's going to be tons of specs and then we're going to go into the user experience like how does this actual user experience compare to something from my Mac. I think very important thing to notice over here is that like where I am coming from because if I covered every single aspect of every single area of this MacBook Pro, it will be an hour and a long, if not a few hours long, and then, you know, everyone gets bored. So I'm gonna slot this video into a few different areas and I'm gonna compare these areas that I feel comfortable talking about, like the Adobe products, video editing, and then just, you know, personal use, whatever you use it for. If you're looking for something very specific, then I'm gonna leave a few links in the description below where I found some very useful information. So you can check out those videos below. So first of all, let's do a little bit of a paper comparison, right? This MacBook Pro is a quad core, 1.4 gigahertz to 3.9 gigahertz, okay? It's an Intel i5-8257 new processor inside there. M1 Mac mini over here is an eight core CPU, I think. Now, we don't know how many threads there are because we know this is a four core and eight thread processor. This is eight core CPU, but there's also a 16 core neural engine inside and an eight core GPU. So this is somewhere in the middle over there. Now the actual clock speeds is 3.2 gigahertz. All core boost is three gigahertz. So something around there, right? Then we have this PC behind me i didn't get out because it's absolutely massive and heavy so we're gonna leave it behind me over there but surely enough we're talking about it that pc has a ryzen 9 16 core 
and 32 thread. It's called Ryzen 3950X processor inside. A dedicated GPU, which is an RTX 2060 Super and eight gigabytes of video memory. Now, moving on to this Mac Pro, we have an eight core GPU, whatever that means, because there's no like CUDA cores or it's a little bit of a vague information at this point in time. So on the paper, the specs look a bit odd. And then this MacBook over here has the integrated graphics on that actual processes. So these two go a bit more like common or the same route where the actual graphics chip is built into the processor or next to the processor, whatever you want to say. And the RAM is the same. We have an eight gigabyte. LPDDR3 memory on the MacBook Pro running at 2133 megahertz. We have this Mac uh, M1 chip over here, which has an eight gigabytes of LPDDR4 memory, but that is shared between the CPU, GPU, and everything else going on in the system. And this computer behind me has eight gigabytes of video memory and 64 gigabytes of actual DDR4 RAM running at 3200 megahertz. First of all, comparing Cinebench R23. This MacBook Pro has a score of 993. The Mac Mini has a score of 1520. And if you don't know how impressive that is, then this Windows workstation behind me scores a single score of 1330. Nine, which is very impressive. But just put in perspective, some people have said that this is much better than the AMD 5000 series CPUs. Then if you look at the AMD 5000 CPU series CPUs, then the Ryzen 9 score over 1600 and the Ryzen 7 and 5 score close to 1600 points. So they are still better than the M1 chip. Going over to the multi-core, then this MacBook scores 4,221 points, whereas the Mac Mini scores 7,733 points, which is almost double the MacBook. And it kind of makes sense that, you know, there's a four cores and eight cores over here. Now the Windows workstation gets a score of 23,425, which is about three times as much as this Mac mini. And this is what we can expect because this is an absolute rendering machine and this Cinebench actually tests that. Now, the most impressive thing about this computer and of this whole video for me is the power consumption. So let's have a look how much power do these machines consume on idle and while running the multi-core Cinebench R23 test? Obviously this MacBook, it's kind of hard to test that because it runs on battery and it pulls the battery power, but it has like a 60 watt charging brick. So it's a little bit all over the place. So we're going to put the MacBook aside over here and just compare this Mac mini compared to this PC behind me. Now this PC on idle consumes about five watts from the wall. Okay, let me put it this way. Five watts is about the LED bulb you have in your living room, in your light socket. Or if you have a bit more powerful LED bulb, you have probably about 10 watts LED bulb. Now, if you have one of those older bulbs, you know, the old fashioned bulbs, then these consume probably about 40 watts or the more powerful ones, 60 watts or 80 watts or even 100 watts of power. Just one bulb. This Mac Mini on idle is 5 watts. And this is when you're running like all your doing emails and doing like normal work things where you're not doing any rendering on the machine, which is super impressive. Now, under the full load, like as much power as this Mac can give out, it only consumes 25 watts of power. Now, let's put it into perspective. This machine behind me, on idle, that is like when you're doing anything, you're just having the windows open and that's it. It consumes 140 watts of power. When you run the Cinebench multitask, it consumes 280 watts of power, which is more than 11 times the amount of this Mac Mini. So if you compare to multi-core score to 11 times, you can see that we're getting amazing performance per watt from this Mac Mini. And this is what is the most impressive thing about this Mac. Now the Geekbench 5, I'm gonna leave these over there as well, which is more like 
you know, test loads of different things, how the CPU can do and what it can do. The single core is much better on the Mac M1 chip than this machine behind me and even more impressive than the MacBook Pro on the side over here. But the multi-core is better on the Windows machine behind me. Now comparing the graphics card specs which are inside this Mac Mini, we can see that the graphics card is more than double what it used to be on the Intel chips over here. The Intel one over here, and we're using OpenCL over here, is 7736, whereas this Mac Mini is 18532, which is very good for a built-in graphics card. Obviously, a dedicated graphics card like this one behind me gets a score of almost 90,000. Now, let's go more over to like the professional work for applications and trying some of the rendering. Doing a Blender test on the MacBook Pro you just give up that there's no point of even doing the test because it takes too long so we're going to skip that one when trying to run this on the mac mini m1 i just couldn't get it running there was an errors over there so can't use that test over there we're going to have to wait for the utilization or optimization for this chip but this windows behind me does it in one minute 35 seconds on the cpu and one minute 09 seconds on the gpu what about the ssd specs this mac mini does a write speed about two gigabytes or 2038 megabytes per second and 2.7 gigabytes per second read speed on this Mac mini. Now compared to this MacBook we have a read speed of 1800 and that's megabytes per second and 1300 megabytes per second on the write speed which is much better on the Mac M1 mini. But if you're wondering if these specs are impressive, then moving on to this Windows PC behind me, the read speed of that machine over there, 3,800, going close to 4,000 megabytes, that is four gigabytes per second read speed, and over four gigabytes per second write speed. I was thinking about running the After Effects Bench, uh, benchmark on the M1 Mini, but for some reason, mine didn't work. It just was error there. It just couldn't make it work. Now, I've seen some people do it online, so let's consider this as my error. And I don't know, but on, in my case, it didn't work. So for some people out there, it might not work for you either. So it's not as stable as you think. But what I could do is run some benchmarks on Premiere Pro. Now, this machine doesn't have an application or Premiere Pro application that is optimized for this chip. There's something called Rosetta inside that translates the Intel and AMD structure codes or that code to this M1 chip and seeing how well does this perform. Now, you might be saying, hey, you should be comparing and testing some of the actual optimized M1 applications. But the thing is, a lot of people like me who are already using the Adobe Creative Cloud, for example, there is a no option for them. And what you want to know is how well do these work in the current state? Until there is an M1 optimized applications out there, this is what we have to work with. I'm running different codecs there, different video codecs, different resolution codecs, and seeing how well does it do. Now, everything is played back at full resolution, which is actually not an optimizer, a recommended workflow because no one will play back a full resolution in that video preview in that corner over there because even if you're editing 4K, this is not a 4K screen over there so there's no point of playing it back full screen but just to pull all the juices from the processor, what they can do, we're playing them back on full screen. There is some interesting things I want to note over here. There's certain codecs that this Mac Mini does really well and is very well optimized for. For example, Red Raw. Red Raw 4K on this Mac Mini dropped zero frames, which is exactly the same as this big Windows PC behind me. But on this MacBook over here, we've basically dropped in all of the frames. Over 75% of the frames were dropped, but it's not the same on the Red Raw 8K because obviously there's much more resolution, but that's just interesting. Also, what else is interesting is that just the normal 4K 10-bit 422 H.264 codec that comes from this camera right now, playing that back, the MacBook did much better job than this Mac Mini. So it's not just that this is better at any codec or any video re resolution. Every machine is optimized for certain codecs and certain resolutions, but it's interesting to see what this does very well. Also, when doing the test sequence of all of these codecs and footage that are used for the playback test over here, then we can see that this MacBook actually drops less frames than this Mac Mini which is just impressive. Obviously there we're using scaling of video, we're using different LUTs, there's different color grading going on. So there's a lot of things going on. Try to 
utilize or, or actually see how well does the GPU and CPU perform together because some of these effects can be accelerated through GPU. All of these numbers, what you can see over there is how many frames does it drop, just so you know. So the smaller the number, the better. Now let's have a look at the rendering test. Rendering test on Adobe Premiere Pro and this MacBook over here rendered this test sequence at 46 minutes now this is a two minute sequence and it renders it at 46 minutes and 15 seconds which is ridiculous it's basically unusable okay you can use it if you have all the time in the world but in most cases you're gonna go to sleep or do something else but this mac mini over here very impressively rendered that same clip six minutes and 12 seconds now you think it's a two minute timeline and it takes six minutes to render, but it is actually very impressive compared to something that only consumes 25 watts of power and there is 8K RAW over there, there's 6K Blackmagic RAW. Some clips are three 6K Blackmagic RAW on top of each other, put on the screen, and it's trying to render that while putting LUTs on top of it, while color grading it. Now that is quite impressive that three times the length of the project we're getting this m machine to complete the project. Obviously, when you want a professional machine that actually is optimized for exactly the rendering task, then this machine behind me completes it less than playback time, which is one minute, 18 seconds. Just to put in perspective, another random test that I wanted to do is how fast does it turn on and turn off from sleep? And as you can see, like the turn on time is the fastest on Mac book pro over here whether it's from sleep or turning on it is the fastest and next up comes this mac mini and then comes the windows pc so what are you saying let's try to conclude now a little bit of this and the usability and what's happening over here should you be buying this is this the end of pc era well i want to know and hopefully this here concludes this a little bit. Now, if you're wondering if you should retire your PC workstation, then that is not the case. This Mac mini is not in the league of trying to retire your PC. That is not the case, not yet. Until we see Mac make a Mac Pro version of this M1 chip or M2 chip or M3 or whatever chip they're coming out, then that will be impressive. But at this point, no, not really. If you're wondering, is this Mac mini the best that is out there and beating all PCs out there, that is not truth either. Now, it's very impressive single core performance for the price point, and we can see it's very close to the AMD 5000 series, but not quite there yet. What is very impressive about this Mac mini is the previous generations of Mac, because this is almost the best Mac that Apple has made, and it only costs 699 pounds which is ridiculous. It absolutely wipes basically in most of the 99 cases, every single MacBook or every single Mac mini that has been before. Maybe there is some odd situations or odd workflows where this new one is slower, but in most of the cases, you'll see this outperform anything, any Mac that's out there, especially on the user experience. Now, this Mac mini is incredibly fast at everyday tasks. So when doing Safari or Chrome on opening Toxa, opening Windows, closing Windows, honestly, I didn't think this was possible. When using some of the Safari, if you haven't seen my first impressions video, then on one of the first impression video, we're going on Safari and it opens things faster than it, than it just can think. I'm pressing enter, it almost feels like it's going there before I press enter, which is just ridiculous. What about Premiere Pro? Now, this is not optimized application. If you pull down the resolution to not full speed, it is quite impressive playback speed, especially when you're using Blackmagic RAW or Red RAW 4K you're gonna get amazing timeline performance with this Mac mini. And that's not even optimized performance. So I'm very excited to see what the optimized performance will be like. Depends on the codec, obviously. Some codecs, it's not so easy to optimize with this, but there is always an option to make proxies. I made Apple ProRes proxies over here. It takes about three or four times the time of the actual clip video length, like this A7S II 4K 10-bit footage. It made a proxy for this and the timeline performance is flying around. So if you can do that, this is absolutely fantastic. Now, does it work perfectly? And the honest answer is no. I found quite a bit of different glitches and things that weren't working. 
especially when upgrading to the Big Sur OS system. I had better performance on this Mac Mini before on Premiere Pro especially and Safari and Chrome before upgrading to the new software. Even my keyboard that I was using, I'm using like a Windows keyboard paired with this Mac Mini, suddenly is not getting recognized and there's some glitches and issues which is exactly the same keyboard, it's plugged in exactly the same port but there is glitches. So in Premiere Pro there was some audio issues, I wasn't able to add any audio effects, there was a lot of things that were like a bit, whoa, what is going on over here? So it's not optimized, it's not perfect yet, but there is a lot of potential. So before we're going to talk about some of the bad sides of this Mac Mini, I want to conclude kind of this video and this question, is it the end of PC era? Not yet, but it can be very close if Mac pulls the same amount of power per watt on a bigger machine, then the PCs are in trouble, whether it's AMD and Intel, both of them, or even Nvidia, they're all in trouble. But that means that all of these applications that run on Windows or this architecture or this code, they have to be optimized for this in order to actually get that performance out, which might take a long time. About the bad sides, one of the things that really annoys me is it feels like this Mac Mini is an Apple's like a recycle project or something that they had to push out really fast to do. And here's why. This is a Mac Mini which should be like the smallest Mac like a desktop computer you can buy. But the thing is, when you look at the actual teardowns of this computer, most of the inside is completely empty, which leaves me a question. Why didn't they make this case smaller in order to emphasize that point? And secondly, why didn't they add some of these expansion slots? For example, storage. Why isn't there an M.2 storage slot over there? It could be easily to like twist or clip out the bottom of it and then add an M.2 drive for all of the users to get cheap storage. But Apple doesn't want you to do that. Apple wants you to pay premium on the SSD storage. Okay, show me that then that this is not possible in the Mac and make it smaller. But if you're not making it smaller, give us the option because surely it is possible for not a lot of money for Mac to appeal to even more viewers. I don't know, what do you think? So that, these are some of the downsides for now and obviously the main downside is we have to wait for optimization for this machine. Don't upgrade to Big Sur yet if you own one of these. For me, my personal experience, there's a lot of glitches so we have to wait for some updates but if you want to help Apple, then please do upgrade for the Big Sur so that you can send your usage statistics to them and they can figure out some problems and bugs and then we can get the updates faster. But if you're wondering if you should switch from PC to this one, then probably not yet. If you want to check out this Mac Mini, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. So like this video if you found it helpful, subscribe if you haven't already and I'd love to know what's your opinion and what do you think? Is there anything I missed on this video? Is there anything else you'd like to know? comment below. I'll meet you down there. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.